Good morning. Good morning. Hello. How are we? Are we good? Great. Nice to see you all. There's lots of empty chairs that are super comfy just here if you'd like to come and sit on them. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Jo. If you haven't met me, um, I'm married to Pete. Pete um, is the new minister here. And uh, if you're new here, you're very welcome, because so am I. <laughs> this is our fourth, third, fourth? Fourth Sunday. 
Um, so uh, I'm, I'm very delighted to be leading the service this morning. So um, thanks for coming and sitting in the front. How co- are the co- chairs really comfy? They're really comfy, so come. Come and sit closer. Um, so uh, we are continuing our Lent series at the moment. Is anybody giving up anything for Lent? Or taken? Yeah, a few? What have we given up? Does anyone want to shout out? You don't need to admit if you don't want to, but... Wine! <gasps> wow. You're giving up caffeine. Oh, my goodness. This is Jenny. Oh, that's excellent. So um, Jenny's putting aside a pound a day and so that she can collect that up and give it to a charity. That's an excellent idea. Brilliant. Any others want to shout out? Anything else for Lent? Chocolate. Taking it up or giving it up? (laughs) Bit of both. (laughs) Brilliant. Um, Okay, excellent. Um, So the series that we are following was produced by LICC, London Institute for Contemporary Christianity. You probably all know that. Um, that Steve works with, and it's looking at being living on purpose. So he opened the series last week, and we will continue looking at it. Um, so we've been following along some of the readings. They've got it on the app, if anyone's been following as well. Um, and I, I, I like this series. I like to be purposeful in the things that I do and Pete and I do. Um, but sometimes I feel like when people say, oh, thanks for joining, by the way, more people at the front. I like these seats filling up. Um, that when you're living on purpose, it feels like everything should go well and right. And that isn't always the case in my life. I like to be purposeful. It doesn't always work out as I intend. I feel like living in London, public transport never lets you <laughs> work out as you intend. Um, and there's different things. I mean, I, I, we were just talking about things that don't quite work out as planned. We try to be very thoughtful about uh, the waste that we produce, Pete and I, in our household. So we live towards a zero waste lifestyle. Has anybody heard of that? Um, it sounds, yeah, great. So it sounds a bit crazy, but we're trying to reduce all of the wa- any waste that we send to landfill. Um, so we only produce small amount of rubbish that goes into landfill once every a bag, maybe once every few months or something. Um, so food waste is a big deal. Now, if anyone lives in Wandsworth, you know that they don't collect food waste here. And so I had a small... Um, heart attack when I realized I'm going to have to put food in a normal bin and throw it away. So I did all my good research to figure out new ways of doing it here. But um, we tried to be really purposeful and uh, then it didn't quite work out. So for the last few weeks I've been throwing things in a bin. Now I know that might sound like a random story to be telling you, but uh, for us, the way we live, the amount of waste we produce is a part of how we try to steward well how we live on the earth. So for me, it was actually quite hard to do this, to be throwing things away thinking, but we tried so hard to honor God in our lifestyle and the way we live. It didn't quite work out. We now have a new system. Has anyone heard of Bokashi composting? No, I hadn't either. Go and Google it. It's slightly random. I'll save you the details. But we have now started this new system. So maybe I'll report back at another point. But my point is that living on purpose, being purposeful, doesn't always work out first time. And that's okay. And so as we go through this series, even if things don't work out as we intended, um, it's still about our intentions and our intentions before God rather than it all working out perfectly. Um, So Steve shared this verse uh, last week that I think is going to come up. Um, Romans 12, it's from the message version, which isn't a translation of the Bible, but more of a paraphrase. Um, And it says, uh, here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, 
ordinary life. You're sleeping. You're eating. Think about my food waste. Going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God and you'll be changed from the inside out. Now, I love that verse. It's one of my favorite verses. And there's three really important words at the beginning of that. God helping you. God helping you. We bring our everyday ordinary life. And so as we think about that, as we go through this service, as we go through these series, keep those words in mind. We're going to sing two songs. first one is really a reminder of what we believe um, and the, the, it's the creeds and singing those words. And as we sing them, let's just be mindful of the words that we're singing. Um, and the second one, it reminds us that no matter what is going on in life, that God is with us. Um, so I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing. Lord Jesus, we come before you this morning. And we bring all of ourselves, the bits that feel good and have gone well, and the parts of our life that feel like it's not quite working out at the moment. We bring our whole selves before you. And Holy Spirit, we invite your presence to dwell with us this morning. We want to meet with you. We want to be changed from the inside out. We want to fix our attention on you afresh. Would you be glorified by our praises, by our worship to you this morning? In your name, amen. Let's stand together.
Blessed be your name. 
in the last few minutes. You're very welcome. Um, this is a time where we greet each other in the service. We give plenty of time for this. So uh, please say hello to somebody. You might want to tell the story of how purposeful your week has been or unpurposeful um, as it turns out. But say hello. You might even make your way up to the balcony to say hello. I haven't even found the stairs yet, but I might make it up there. So uh, do say hello to one another. Good morning, everyone. Come on, ladies, settle down, and gentlemen. You okay, Pete? That's okay. I just want to say I, I, bring, I bring you greetings from the Caribbean, having just come back from three weeks there. I had wall-to-wall -wall blue sky and sun, just like you had here. Yeah. So... And I'm going to go back tomorrow, I think, because I miss it so much. What was that, Margaret? Where? Okay, I went to Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao, Grand Cayman, Cozumel, Mexico, and the Bahamas. I was on a ship, okay? I wasn't swimming between the islands. 
but I had a lovely time. And, and just to prepare me for coming back, when we got to the port in Florida, it poured with rain the whole day. But it was warm rain, so I don't mind. Liquid sunshine, they call it in the Caribbean. Liquid sunshine. Anyway, greetings to you all. Nice to have you here. Um, some of you will know this already because you get emails, but if not, there's a letter at the back for those of you. We have a very nice letter from our new pastor, postman pa uh, pa Pastor Pete, sorry. <laughs> and an invitation to his ordination and induction, which is on the 20, it's on the screen, 23rd of March. So that's only four weeks away, is that right? Oh, I thought it was ages to go. Yeah. Anyway, four weeks away. Uh, and the times are 1.30 to 5 o'clock. There's going to be a bouncy castle for all of those of you over 70. Uh, and there'll be lots of food and fun. And the serious part as well of his ordination and his induction. Okay, so if you'd need a paper copy, it, it's on the back table there. But many of you will have received them uh, by email already. Just two other quick items of pastoral news. I learned this week, some of you will already know, that dear Millie's husband, Everton, is in hospital. So let's keep him in prayer. He's keeping Cecile Spencer, who's also in hospital, company. They're on the same ward, but not the same sort of, um, whatever it's called, you know, bay. That, thank you, the bay. <laughs> I should know that coming back from the Barbados, shouldn't I? from the Caribbean. And then the other thing is last night, Donald, who's not paying attention, called me to say that his dad, Eddie, has gone into hospital. Um, so he's not very well. He's a bit confused at the moment. So if you were thinking of visiting, they've asked maybe not to visit at the moment. But you can find out any more information from Donald. Yes, that one there. You want to say something? No. <laughs> okay. Joe, over to you. Thanks. Okay, so as I said, we're carrying on our series of Living on Purpose, um, and so Pete will be sharing about purpose in work. Um, and so uh, we, so the reading today, we're going, we thought it's a good place to start, well he thought and gave it to me to read, um, a good place to start is in the beginning, um, I did agree, yes that is true, and uh, at, right at Genesis 1. So I'm going to uh, do this reading. Now, it, we've taken it from the NRSVA, and uh, it's, it takes me about six minutes to read. We're going to read the whole chapter. We like scripture, and so if you're sitting in the comfy chairs, you'll be particularly glad to sit back and enjoy. And uh, it's verses that probably most of us have heard lots before. But as I read it, you might want to follow on the screen. You might want to close your eyes and just take in uh, the reading. And as we immerse ourselves in Scripture, um, it's a good practice to read Scripture together. And we immerse ourselves in that story of God. This is how the story began, the Bible tells us. Um, and we just let it um, uh, permeate as we listen. All right. So in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said... Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, 
Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let there be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said... Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind and with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply, fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, 
and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. I hope you've enjoyed that. (laughs) It's good to read scripture. We talk a lot about it. It's good to listen and let it just wash over us. Sometimes changing up the version makes us notice things that we haven't noticed before. And so hopefully you've been freshly inspired by hearing those verses. Um, We're going to sing two more songs before Pete comes and shares with us. So I believe Great Are You, Lord, is coming next. So uh, if you're able and comfortable, why don't you stand and let's sing. Yo. Yeah. 
Creator God, you truly are worthy of it all. We bring you our songs of praise, and as we reflect on this passage of scripture that we have just been immersed in, soaked in, we pray that we would be reminded individually, personally, but also as a community of who you are of your greatness, of your creation, of us as your created beings, and of our part in your story. Speak to us by your spirit, through your scripture, as a community, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please do... Grab a seat. Um, good morning. How is how's everybody doing? Are we good? We're good. Um, whoever uh, closed the blinds today, thank you. I know a few weeks ago when I was last speaking, it was beautiful sunshine, probably not as warm as uh, the Caribbean for Charles and Marilyn. Uh, I wasn't too jealous when he mentioned that a moment ago, thinking of that wonderfully warm sunshine. But um, yeah, it's really good to welcome you to church this morning. Uh, if you are regular and you've been coming for many years, it's really wonderful to see you. We're getting to know you. Uh, we're looking forward to getting to know you more over the coming weeks and months. As Charles said, there is a letter Um, I think at the back, so please do, if you haven't read it yet, pick it up, Um, and please do come and speak to us. We are wanting Joe and I to get around to people and to speak to you and to get to know you, but hopefully you will feel we are approachable people, Um, the way we smile and the way we hold ourselves. Um, Please do come and say hello, because we want to get to know you as quickly and as much as possible. The letter is there to help that a little bit, but it's always best um, in person. Um, Let's check if you can put the slides up, please, Joan. Um, And it's great to pick up this uh, series that Steve started last week. Uh, As we enter this season of Lent, Jo introduced that to us a moment ago. She asked a few people if you are doing anything for Lent. Uh, Lent is this season. For those of you that are newer maybe to the church or to the Christian faith, Lent is this season in the calendar that we mark for 40 days before Easter, in the lead up to Easter, where amongst other things we reflect on that experience of Jesus in the wilderness that we read about right before his public ministry. Thank you, Joan. Um, We enter into that story that Jesus himself was in where he walked through the desert for 40 days. He was led, we were told, into the desert and he was challenged and tempted by Satan in the desert. But as part of that, he drew on the bigger story of what God was doing in and through him. He drew on scripture, he drew on the teachings of scripture to face those challenges. And so what we are doing as a church through Lent, thank you, Joan, this year is picking up on a very particular series. So Steve introduced this series last week. As you know, he works for this organization, London Institute of Contemporary Christianity. Um, And we're thinking about, as Joe said as well, what it means to live purposefully, what it means to reorientate ourselves, to reroute ourselves in that biblical story, that story that we find ourselves in, that the Bible opens up, that we are a part of, and what it means to live intentionally within that story. And so over the next five weeks now, up until Easter, we're going to be thinking about what it means to live purposefully, intentionally, within different dimensions of our life. So Steve introduced the subject last week, and from now on up until Easter, we're going to think about those different dimensions of life that we find ourselves in, and what it means to live purposefully, walking with God, in God's world, 
in those places where we find ourselves. And so this week, we are opening up a subject that I know you often think about in this church. Um, thank you, Joan. Which is what it means to live purposefully and intentionally in our work. Living intentionally in our work. Now, I don't know, when I say that word work this morning, what that means for you. What suddenly comes into your mind when you hear that word? I'm going to give you just 30 seconds to turn to a person next to you. Hopefully this isn't too scary. Um, If you'd rather not, you don't have to. But when you hear that word work, what comes to your mind? What emotions, what feelings come to you when you hear that word work this morning? Okay, go for it. Okay, I'm going to bring you back. I told you it wouldn't be long. Um, What I should have said, I think we're okay, but if there are any children or young people who uh, normally would go to children's church, that is happening today. I'm so sorry we should have said that. I think we're good. But if there are any children or young people, Christine and Balaji, I believe, are out with the children, so feel free to go. If you want to stay and listen to what I'm going to reflect on, you are so welcome, uh, but you might also enjoy children's church. Um, Okay, I heard one word come up immediately on my right-hand side, which was the word stress. And by the looks of people's faces, that person wasn't the only one. Uh, Are there any other words or phrases? This is not a judgment on what you say. Uh, Again, as ever, I'm not testing. I've got a hand up at the back. It's a bit of a silhouette, but somebody wants to shout something. Enjoyment. A a bit on the other end of the spectrum to stress. But but another descriptive word, yes. Depressing. (laughs) I feel like we're counterbalancing from one to the other. Does someone want to give a more positive word again? <laughs> Commitment. Oh, no. Joyce? Job satisfaction. We really have gone back to the other end. <laughs> I presume it's sad, as in good satisfaction, not the James Brown song. Uh, creation. Oh, I feel like Tim is, should be coming up and sharing from us. He's on message. <laughs> Kudos to Tim for being on message. Um, one more. Anyone else? Busy. I don't, I, I'll be honest, I don't know where that came from. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, busy. Uh, yes, busy. Um, there are a range of words and feelings and emotions when we think about this word work and when we think about purpose in work this morning. And in this room, I'm, I'm hopefully not naive, there will really be a range. There will be some people for whom saying this phrase and thinking about this subject this morning will bring up the stresses of the past week or suddenly get you thinking about the deadlines of the week to come. And I'm sorry for that from the get-go, although that is the the talk that we've got. Um, For some of you, as we've pointed out, it will be a much more positive word and a positive feeling. It will be something that you find yourself day-to-day really enjoying how your life looks. For others, this might be a painful word. We don't always think about work as a painful word, but for some of us it might be because of either bad experiences Or for some of us, we might not be working, we think, at this moment, or feel able to work for whatever reason in life circumstances. And so hearing that word this morning might feel a little bit painful. For others, it might feel irrelevant. Because for some people, you may feel that you've been involved in work over the years, and maybe your life doesn't have work, as we often understand and define it, in your life at this moment. There are a mixture of ranges and emotions that will come to us today when we hear that word. But what I want us to think about and what I hope will come through this passage is that as we go back to this this story that Tim picked up on, back to the story of creation, we will find that this word work actually is relevant for each one of us because what I think 
the Bible tells us and that we're thinking about this morning is much more than just work as we often define it, as paid employment. We're thinking about a much bigger vision and a much bigger story of work that I think is much more exciting than we often are told it is and we find ourselves in. Thank you, Joan. And that's why this morning we went back to that first chapter of Genesis. Um, I think Joe did a brilliant reading of a long chapter. I know a couple of weeks ago we read a long passage uh, where we looked at Jesus and the woman at the well. And today was another long passage. And my hope was for those that were able to see on the screen, we put some images with it to to conjure up, to give you some thoughts as Joe was reading. If you had your eyes closed, your, your mind and your imagination might have done that. But as Joe read through, through that passage, I wanted us to be immersed in the story because very often in churches, we say a quick bit of the Bible and then we spend a long time reflecting on it. And it's important that we reflect on it. It's important that people who have thought and have something, God has something to say through them, share that back. But it's also really important that we immerse ourselves in where we get our reflections from. And this passage this morning, Genesis chapter 1, takes us right back, or if you go back to the the slide before, sorry, Joan, right back to in the beginning. Because with the Bible, we are entering a big story. The Bible is this great, grand narrative that is telling us the story of the world that we find ourselves in. There are subplots, there are twists, there are many uh, kind of relationships and things that happen along the way. Ultimately, it points to Jesus. But overall, the Bible is one big story. And today, we've gone right back to the beginning of it, right where it all began. And like any good story, it has those first three words. In the beginning. Like any good story, maybe when we were growing up that we were told or we read, in the beginning, it takes us back to the start. And what I wanted us to think about this morning is in this passage, there are many themes that we can think about. And Genesis is is a book, and these first few chapters of Genesis have been unpacked by many people. We're not going to uncover it. And what I want to stress again and remind people of this morning is that when we approach Genesis, we're not looking at a detailed scientific analysis of the beginnings of the world. We are looking at the story that we're invited into. And as we do that, as we get invited into this story, there are a number of themes that emerge. And one of those is the story of work. How we understand what work is, what it means, and what it means for us. Thank you, Joan. And if we think back to what Joe read, and if you have a Bible and you want to go back to it, What we see in chapter 1 is that we are told about the very first worker in this world. And I've kind of given the answer on the screen already. But that first worker is God himself. That's what we read through this morning. In the beginning, God created. That's the story of chapter 1. Amongst other themes that come out is this theme of God working. And that's why I wanted us to go back to this passage this morning. It's because it reminds us from the very beginning of creation, God is a working God. We sometimes think of work as being either a necessary evil, something that comes later in the story, but actually from the very opening words of the Bible, we are told that God works. This chapter is describing God's creative acts. It talks about work and God's work as soon as it is talking about anything. And so the act of work is built into the very nature of who God is and the creation that we find ourselves in. Thank you, Joan. And as we maybe know and have read again this morning and have maybe reflected on before in previous talks, in this creation, in this creation story, we're told about the climax of what God creates. 
as humankind. The climax of God's creation in not just displaying his beauty and his creativity like the rest of creation, but there is a very distinct part of God's work in humankind in that humans are created in God's image. Each one of us this morning bears the image of the creator God. Sometimes that's an easy thing for us to think about. Sometimes it's more difficult. But for everyone here this morning, we each bear something of the image of the creator God. I think that's incredible. And I think we sometimes say that, even this morning, say it, and we don't really think about the profoundness that the creator makes us in that same image, to bear some of that image. And so when we talk about bearing God's image, part of that is going to be in the fact that we are created also to work. Now already, when I start talking about work this morning, we might have, as we've said, lots of things running through our mind. God's work in the Bible, as it's described here, is not as we often understand work. God wasn't taking a salary. God wasn't working to set hours. He created them, but he wasn't working to them. He didn't have a contract, but his creative acts were acts of work. And in creating us to bear God's image, we are also, as we read in this morning's passage, created to be people that work. There is a, a well-known Christian writer and theologian who um, sadly, I think, passed away, maybe it was last year, a guy called Tim Keller. Uh, and there's a brilliant book which uh, Steve had in the office. I don't know if he knows that I've, I've borrowed it, shall we say, for a few days. Uh, but Tim Keller, this Christian writer, puts it this way, work of all kinds, whether with our hands or the mind, is evidence of our dignity as human beings because it reflects the image of God. Tim Keller talks about this idea that our dignity is revealed through the fact that we bear the image of God, and in doing so, we are called to be people that work. And so, with that in mind, with that premise that I want to throw out and help us reflect on this morning, that, that might be a new thing, or that might be something you've thought about before, I just want us to take a few minutes and think about what might it mean to bear God's image in the way that we work this morning. Thank you, Joe. Firstly, work will be diverse. When we read through this chapter in Genesis, we see an incredible array of God's work in creation from the beginning. If we just think back to that story, it talks in Genesis about God filling the world with light and bringing the dry ground into being. It talks of God creating vegetation, plant life, wildlife. It describes a God who brings order to the world that he is creating, separating day from night, land from sky, and the dry ground from the waters. And it describes God's creativity within that creation process, the different animals, the different species. All this is described as God's work. And starting here in Genesis, as God creates humankind, we see a diverse picture of what work looks like, the jobs that are given to those first humans. And that continues through scripture. Starting here in Genesis and continuing through, God creates humankind with different skills, different abilities, different experiences and passions so that we might put them to use. Thank you, Joan. Or Leia, I should say. I don't know how easy it is for people to see that picture on the screen because of the light. There are a range of activities that people might take through the week. And some of those images might conjure up something for you about what your week might look like. I'm going to ask you to turn to the person 
uh, next to you again and just share whether it's something that you see on the screen that stimulates your thoughts or just something else. What will your week look like this week? What will you find yourself doing? Whether that is paid employment, whether that is through volunteering work, whether that is through a whole range of other activities, just share something about what will your week involve this coming week. Okay. Your thoughts might have been stimulated by the pictures or you might have had something else in mind. Our weeks will look incredibly different, won't they? We might be spending a lot of time outdoors. We might be spending time indoors. We might be spending a lot of time with people, people of different ages. We might be in an office space. We might be at a computer screen. We might spend a lot of time cooking, whether that's for us or for other people. But this week, we will all be in different places, different contexts, and different spaces where I believe God wants to put us to work. And so why I say that this morning is because sometimes in our life circumstances, we feel that that word work is less relevant. But in creation, we see from the very beginning, God calls us to be active. That might be physically active. It might be emotionally active, socially active, mentally active, but we are called to be active people that bear God's image, and that will look different for all of us. But there will be things this week in our lives that will maybe mean that we are looking to create something, offer care to somebody, bring order to something, and each of those things gives us a chance to bear that image of God. Thanks, Joe. But I think another theme that comes through as I reflected on it this week in this passage in Genesis is that our work will be relational. I say that because right in the beginning of this creation story, we read something about God and we read something about humankind of which relationality is at its heart. If we think back to the passage we read this morning, God says, let us make humankind in our image. At the very beginning of this Bible story, we are beginning to get a glimpse of God in relationship with himself. It's God three in one persons. It's something that as we continue to read the Bible story, we understand more fully. But at the very beginning... God's words are, let us make humankind in our image. God is a relational God. God creates in relationship with himself. And when God creates, he didn't create solitary things. He created people. He created animals and wildlife to work in relationship with one another. Um, I don't know if anybody has heard about a book called The Hidden Life of Trees. Anybody at all? It sounds uh, not that exciting, but I can assure you it's a brilliant book. The Hidden Life of Trees is about the way that trees communicate to one another in order to grow and to flourish. And very often we think about with trees that it's about the depth of the roots. But with many trees, it's also about how the roots intersect with one another and how the trees communicate to each other. Now that's a new concept for me. Uh, As much as I love to think I know a lot about wildlife, I really don't know that much. But one of the profound things of this book is how trees flourish because they communicate between one another. Their growth, their activity is not just a solitary action, 
It is about a relationship with one another. If you don't know what I'm talking about, or you're not sure if I'm actually saying something that's really true and I've got it wrong, I'm very happy to point you to the book afterwards. But it's a profound thing about God's creation and also us as people, is that we are called to be active in relationship with one another and to bring about the best in others through that relationship. And so whatever our week looks like this week, if you can take us back to those pictures, thanks, Joan. Whatever it is that our week is looking like in the week ahead, we will have opportunities to connect with others. Some of us with lots of people, but some of us maybe with less people. Some of us, it will be mostly online. Some of us, it might be through phones. Some of us, it might be in person. At our homes, in an office space, there will be different places that we find ourselves this week. But when God wants to put us to work, I believe he wants us to work relationally well with others. Because at the heart of this creation story is about God creating humankind to be in good relationship with him, in good relationship with his world, and in good relationship with one another. And so as you think about living intentionally, as we think about what it means to live this week as part of God's story, being active in the world, it's about how we pursue those relationships and how do we pursue healthy relationships within those spaces. Thank you, Jane. Work also brings flourishing in this creation story. I don't think it's a coincidence. It's very intentional that this opening chapter is all set in a garden. It gives us this idea of flourishing. Anybody who has a garden, which isn't always that often in London, uh, will know about the work that it takes to get a garden in place. Um, I haven't given you a picture, but when Joe and I were living in Cardiff, we were very blessed. We rented a house uh, that had a huge garden, to the extent where, slightly to our shame, we were unable to manage it. We had great ideas and hopes about what we were going to do with this garden. We managed to get some of the way. I think we're convincing ourselves we got some of the way. But it was a difficult thing to maintain. Gardens are difficult things to maintain. And what we found difficult was having the time to do it ourselves. And also, at least for myself, I won't throw my wife under the bus, the skill set to do those different jobs. We needed other people's help to help that garden to flourish because we all have different skills and abilities. And so to help things flourish, there will be people with different skills and abilities, whether that be in your workplace, in your community. But the idea building on the fact that work is relational is that together we are called to pursue a flourishing world, as God would have it be, that original creation. We know that that is not as the world is. But when we root ourselves back in this story, we are reminded that we are called with others to pursue a flourishing world and we are created differently. I wonder what flourishing looks like in your life this week. Not just flourishing for you, but flourishing for others and flourishing for God's wider world. For some people this week, that might literally be about bringing order to some very out-of-order spreadsheets. I'm getting some looks of people who now know that's what their week is going to involve. But that actually will be part of it because it will help processes work better. For some people, as it does this morning, it means helping sound and visuals to work well so that I can be heard, which is hopefully a good thing, and for the music team to be here, which is definitely a good thing. But that is about bringing flourishing so that people might participate. Flourishing will look very different this week. It might be helping people flourish through providing them with food or a coffee by serving or cooking. It might be flourishing through the conversation that we offer this week that nourishes a person's soul and mind as well as their body. Every one of us this week will have that opportunity to put 
our God-given abilities and skills and experiences and situations into practice by helping not just ourselves, but helping others to flourish. And so with those pictures on the screen, I would just encourage you to think about what does it mean to be active this week? Whatever our life circumstances might be at the moment, how might God use you this week to bring that flourishing? And then finally, maybe a word that you're all hoping would come up and desperate to see in your own life. Work will require rest. Rest is part of this creation story. God rested. And so if we're to bear God's image, we don't just work well, we rest and we rest well. When you go back to this story, God wasn't resting in order to recover. He was resting to enjoy what he had made to enjoy that creation, to celebrate what had been made. And so to rest well at times might involve recovery from tough seasons and from tough times in our workplace. But rest is also there to be resting well that we might celebrate, that we might enjoy both what we have been involved in creating and a bigger part of what this world is around us with others. And so for each of us this morning, I would encourage us to think about what does resting well look like? Because the Bible's story about work also involves rest. And if we want to bear that image, if we want to be people that God has fully created us to be, it's about finding time to rest and to rest well. Thank you. And so this morning, as we just reflect on that story of work, that story of work that begins in Genesis, we know that's not the end of the story, it's the first chapter, we're not going to be looking at every chapter through Genesis uh, from now until Easter, but I wanted us to start in that beginning story this morning, to think about what it means to live in that original purpose that God has for his creation. We know as we go to the next few chapters, there is a plot twist in the story where sin enters and there is a breakdown, not just of humankind's relationship with God, but about how we live in that good pattern. And yet there is somebody who comes to bear that image fully so that we might see it in all its glory. Over the coming weeks, we lead up to Easter where we think about the person of Jesus coming to this world on the cross, reconnecting us with God for relationship with him, but through his life, bearing that image of what it means to be truly human. Living out that vocation that God had on his life, but also talking about rest and the importance of rest and pursuing a life that sought the flourishing of others. And so, as I invite the music team to come back up, I'm just going to ask you to uh, close your eyes and to think about, as I've already said, what is your week going to involve? It will be a range of contacts. You might be feeling excited about the week ahead, You might not be feeling excited about the week ahead. You might know the work, the tasks, the activities that it will involve. You might not know. But this week, we get invited afresh to be part of that story that God is writing. To bear that image of God in the world through the power and through the grace of Jesus. Work and activities that will bring us into relationship with others, where we might bear God's image to those people. Work, tasks, and activities that will give us the opportunity to help others flourish, not just ourselves. 
and work tasks and activities that will also require us to rest, to intentionally find times to rest and to rest well. And so as we hold those situations the week ahead of us in our hearts and in our minds, I want to pray that you loving creator God would lead us this week so that we might see more of your image in and through us that we might see the image of you in others, that we might see those opportunities to relate well with others, in order that we might bring about flourishing in relationships within your wider world and for your creation. And that you might give us this week those moments to rest, to rest well, to know your presence in those spaces of rest. And that as we follow that pattern, it might be a witness to the world about what it means to be truly human, made in the image of God, modeling a life after your son Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Let's stand together.
we come to the end of our service. Um, thank you, Pete. And um, I don't know about you, I feel um, encouraged and provoked. And I'll be thinking when I'm looking at some spreadsheets this week. I'm not very good at spreadsheets. Um, but uh, I'll be thinking about that work. And that reminder that God was the first worker. And I was reminded as I was reading that scripture that as God worked, at the end of the day, he reflected that, what did he reflect? It was good. It was good. Now, I don't know if you get to the end of each of your day and think, oh, that was good. <laughs> I know you all do, don't you? It's just me when I'm looking at my spreadsheets. But it's, it's a good thing for us to reflect on as we go into this week how do we feel at the end of the day? Um, I shared a house with housemates for many years. I'm not going to lie, when I was hoovering the stairs that they never did, I was always the one, this is good, this is good work. I didn't always feel like that. But whether we're doing housework, whether we're doing our spreadsheets, whether we're cooking, whether we're going shopping, to bring our whole lives as an offering to God... This is our work. We are created in his image, and it is good. And in those moments that we might be finding it hard to reflect on that goodness of the work, maybe that is something that we want to bring before God and ask God to show us the good um, in whatever those things are that we're doing. Um, so, thank you for being with us this morning. We are at the end. Do stay around for tea and coffee and biscuits or, or whatever other drinks there are. Um, we've been signing the Covenant membership cards um, throughout the last month or so. Um, if you haven't done one, you can still do that. If you're watching online or you're not able to come to church at the moment, you can um, still uh, be posted one, probably, um, by somebody. Uh, do get in touch. Um, please keep in mind, Steve and Nisa are away and the family are away at the moment, um, both working and resting, um, so do keep them in your prayers. Um, and I think that is it for this morning. So thank you, um, worship team and everyone being involved who've been working to put this morning on. Um, and if you feel like helping and stay around and working at the end, or we put chairs back, please do as well. But enjoy tea and coffee. Say hello to somebody next to you um, and maybe share about what work you'll be doing this week. Thanks. Take rest, cause the living God is living in my chest Every day I wake up feeling blessed And even if I don't, I see it as a test <laughs>
Cause I was lost until you found me Now I know you're on